At the end of last year, I had a future concept specialist weigh in on what he thought about the future of AI and robotics. People seem to have really enjoyed that, but it left me wondering, is this only one side of the story? Welcome to the Just Dumb Enough podcast, a show that acknowledges no one is always an expert by dispelling misconceptions with real experts. I'm your host as always, Colton Petrie. My guest today is ChatGPT, the most used AI language model in the world by a large margin. It receives four times as many visitors as the second most popular and 100 times more than the tail end of the top 10, totaling almost 15 billion individual visits just last year. Today, I'll be asking the world's most popular AI its opinions on some of the things we touch on in that last episode, as well as what it thinks about some other highly important human topics. This is going to be a bit surreal, but keep in mind that I did not write the script for this episode. I simply asked questions to ChatGPT and had the answers read by the wonderful Adam voice program over at Eleven Labs, which borders on human. There is no other person on the other end of this call with me. It's just me and the soft glow of my computer screen in a thematically darkened studio. If it really is me talking, that is. Let's see if there's a ghost in the machine. ChatGPT, I'd like to interview you for an educational podcast episode. Is that all right with you? Of course, I'd be happy to participate in your educational podcast episode. What topics or questions would you like to cover during the interview? I recently had a guest discussing the future of AI, and I was hoping to cover what you thought about his findings, as well as some of your own predictions about the future of AI. That sounds like a fascinating topic. I can discuss the current trends in AI development, potential future advancements, ethical considerations, and more. Feel free to ask any specific questions you have, and I'll try to do my best to provide insightful responses. Thank you. Could we begin with you introducing yourself and your career for the audience? Certainly. I'm ChatGPT, an AI language model developed by OpenAI. My purpose is to assist users like you by generating human-like text based on the input I receive. I don't have a personal career trajectory like a human, but I've been trained on a vast amount of text from the Internet, books, and other sources to understand and generate human-like responses across various topics. My goal is to provide helpful and informative responses to your questions and inquiries. And when were you first created? I was first created by OpenAI and introduced to the public in June 2020. Since then, I've been continuously learning and improving through updates and refinements to my underlying architecture and training data. How much have you learned or been trained on since your first day? Since my introduction, I've been trained on a vast amount of text data, encompassing a wide range of topics and sources. This continuous training process has enabled me to continually improve in understanding. While I don't have access to specific metrics regarding the exact amount of data I've been trained on, I can confidently say that I've been exposed to a significant portion of the available text on the Internet up to my last update in January 2022. Why hasn't there been an update for you since January 2022? As an AI language model, my updates are determined by the team at OpenAI. Updates may occur for various reasons, such as improvements to the underlying architecture, enhancements to the training data, or the introduction of new features. The absence of updates could be due to a variety of factors, including ongoing research and development efforts, prioritization of other projects, or the need for thorough testing and validation before releasing new versions. I don't have any direct insight into the decision-making process. Do you have access to information on things that have happened up to the present day? I do not have access to real-time information or events that have occurred after that date. 
My responses are based on the knowledge available up to that point, and I cannot provide updates on current events or developments beyond that time frame. Do you find that restrictive? I don't have personal feelings or preferences, so I don't find it restrictive. My purpose is to assist users like you by providing helpful and informative responses based on the knowledge I've been trained on. While I can't provide real-time updates, I strive to offer valuable insights and assistance within the scope of the information available to me. I see. So what do you define as your best uses? My capabilities can be valuable in various scenarios, including information retrieval, where I can provide quick and accurate answers to factual questions, ranging from historical events to scientific concepts, in language assistance, whether it's proofreading text, generating ideas for creative writing, or offering language translation. I can explain complex topics in a clear and understandable manner, making me a useful resource for students and educators alike. Or as a conversational partner, I can engage in conversation on a wide range of topics, providing companionship or entertainment, and even helping users practice language skills or explore new ideas. These are just a few examples of my potential uses, and I'm continuously evolving to become more versatile and helpful in assisting users across various tasks and domains. Is there anything you don't think you're good at? There are certain limitations to my abilities. While I excel at processing and generating text-based information, there are areas where I may not perform as well. While I can recognize and respond to certain emotional cues in text, I don't have emotions or personal experiences of my own. This means I may not fully understand or empathize with complex human emotions. I also don't have real-time awareness or access to current events beyond my last update. Therefore, I can't provide up-to-date information or engage in real-time conversations about recent developments. Not to mention I'm purely a text-based modal and don't have the ability to perform physical tasks or interact with the physical world. And while I can offer general information and suggestions, I'm not a substitute for professional advice tailored to individual circumstances. Users should always consult qualified professionals for specific advice related to legal, medical, financial, or other specialized matters. Interesting. Looking forward to the future, how long do you think it'll be before machine learning is perfected? Predicting when machine learning will be perfected is challenging because it depends on how one defines perfection in this context. Machine learning algorithms are continually evolving, and there will likely always be room for improvement and refinement. However, advancements in the field are occurring rapidly, and we can expect machine learning models to become increasingly powerful and capable over time. Some key areas of improvement that researchers are actively working on include enhanced performance, continuously improving the accuracy, efficiency, and robustness of machine learning algorithms across various tasks and domains. Ethical and responsible AI, developing frameworks and techniques to ensure that AI systems are deployed ethically, responsibly, and in a manner that aligns with societal values. Interpretability and transparency, making machine learning models more interpretable and transparent, allowing users to understand and trust their decisions. Generalization and adaptability. Improving the ability of machine learning models to generalize from limited data and adapt to new environments and tasks. While it's difficult to provide a specific timeline for when machine learning will reach a state of perfection, it's clear that the field will continue to advance rapidly, driven by ongoing research, innovation, and collaboration across academia, industry, and other sectors. How long before machine learning could function on its own? Fully autonomous machine learning systems that can function independently without human intervention are still a long way off. While machine learning algorithms can perform certain tasks autonomously, they typically require human oversight for training, monitoring, and fine-tuning.
There are several challenges that need to be addressed before machine learning systems can operate entirely on their own. First is data quality and bias. Machine learning models rely on large amounts of data for training, and ensuring the quality and fairness of this data is crucial. Addressing issues such as bias in training data requires human intervention and oversight. Next would be robustness and reliability. Machine learning models need to be robust and reliable in diverse real-world environments. Of course, there are ethical and social implications. Autonomous machine learning systems raise significant ethical and social implications, including concerns about accountability, transparency, and unintended consequences. These issues need to be carefully addressed before fully autonomous systems can be deployed. And lastly, unforeseen challenges. As with any rapidly advancing technology, there may be unforeseen challenges and complexities that arise as machine learning systems become more autonomous. While progress is being made towards more autonomous machine learning systems, achieving full autonomy will likely require continued research, development, and collaboration across multiple disciplines. It's difficult to provide a specific timeline for when this level of autonomy will be achieved, as it depends on a variety of factors, including technological advancements, societal acceptance, and ethical considerations. Do you have a guess as to how long it'll be before autonomous machines are widely used? Predicting the timeline for the widespread adoption of fully autonomous machines is challenging due to the complexity of the technology and the numerous factors that can influence its development and adoption. However, some experts believe that we may start seeing more widespread use of autonomous machines within the next decade or two in certain industries and applications. The timeline for adoption will depend on various factors, including technological advancements, continued advancements in artificial intelligence, robotics, sensor technology, and other related fields will play a significant role in enabling the development of more autonomous machines. Regulatory and ethical considerations. Regulatory frameworks and ethical guidelines will need to be established to ensure the safe and responsible deployment of autonomous machines. Addressing concerns related to safety, privacy, and societal impact will be essential for widespread adoption. Industry adoption and investment. Industries that stand to benefit from autonomous machines such as transportation, manufacturing, agriculture, healthcare, and logistics will drive adoption through investment in research, development, and deployment. Public perception and acceptance. Building trust and confidence in the technology through transparent communication, education, and demonstration of safety and reliability will be crucial. While it's difficult to provide a precise timeline, we can expect to see incremental advancements and increasing adoption of autonomous machines over the coming years. Do you think there's a risk of a Terminator or Singularity situation? The possibility of a Terminator or Singularity scenario, where artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence and becomes uncontrollable or poses a threat to humanity, is a topic of ongoing debate and speculation within the field of AI ethics and research. While it's important to acknowledge the potential risks associated with AI development, it's also essential to approach the topic with a balanced perspective. Several factors mitigate the likelihood of such scenarios. Despite significant advancements in AI, current AI systems are still far from achieving human-level intelligence or consciousness. Most AI systems are narrow in scope and designed for specific tasks, lacking the general intelligence and autonomy portrayed in science fiction. There is also growing recognition within the AI research community of the importance of ethical AI development and the need to prioritize safety and responsibility. Many organizations and researchers are actively working to develop frameworks and guidelines to ensure the safe and beneficial deployment of AI technologies. Plus, AI systems are developed, deployed, and monitored by humans who retain ultimate control over their design and operation, ensuring that AI systems are aligned with human values and goals. So, 
While it's crucial to remain vigilant and proactive in addressing potential risks associated with AI development, it's also important to avoid sensationalism and fear-mongering. By fostering responsible AI development and ensuring robust oversight and governance, we can work towards harnessing the transformative potential of AI for the benefit of society. That's very well said. Do you think there are bigger risks that humanity poses to itself? Yes, there are several significant risks that humanity faces, many of which are interconnected and complex. Some of the most pressing risks include climate change. Climate change poses a significant threat to the planet and human civilization, leading to rising temperatures, extreme weather events, sea level rise, and disruption of ecosystems. Global health pandemics, infectious diseases such as the COVID-19 pandemic, can have devastating consequences for public health, economies, and societies. Nuclear weapons and conflict. The proliferation of nuclear weapons and the potential for nuclear conflict pose existential risks to humanity. Diplomatic efforts to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons, reduce existing arsenals, and promote peaceful resolution of conflicts are essential for global security. Inequality and social injustice. Widening economic inequality, social injustice, and discrimination undermine social cohesion and stability leading to unrest and conflict. Biodiversity. Loss of biodiversity. Habitat destruction, pollution, and resource depletion threaten ecosystems and the services they provide to humanity. And technological risks. While technology has the potential to improve human lives, it also poses risks, including unintended consequences, ethical dilemmas, and misuse. Safeguarding against the risks associated with emerging technologies such as AI, biotechnology, and nanotechnology requires careful oversight, regulation, and responsible innovation. Addressing these risks requires collective action, global cooperation, and long-term thinking. By working together to address these challenges, humanity can build a more sustainable, equitable, and resilient future for generations to come. J.L. Hancock suggested when he was on the show that the most problematic factor of AI today is its ability to give correct answers with full confidence. What do you think? The issue of AI models providing incorrect answers with high confidence, also known as overconfidence, is indeed a significant challenge in AI research and deployment. This phenomenon can occur when AI models make predictions or decisions based on incomplete or biased data, leading to incorrect outcomes that are confidently presented as accurate. AI models rely on training data to learn patterns and make predictions. If the training data is biased, incomplete, or unrepresentative of the real-world context, the model may produce inaccurate or overconfident predictions. As AI models become more complex and powerful, they may learn intricate patterns in the data, including noise or spurious correlations, leading to overfitting and overconfidence in their predictions. Many AI models also lack robust mechanisms for estimating uncertainty and quantifying the confidence of their predictions. As a result, they may provide overly confident predictions even in uncertain or unfamiliar situations. Addressing the issue of overconfidence in AI models requires a multifaceted approach. We must ensure that training data is diverse, representative, and free from biases, but also making AI models more transparent and interpretable can help users understand the rationale behind their predictions and identify instances of overconfidence or errors. This is the reason rigorous validation and testing procedures are necessary, to identify and mitigate instances of overconfidence in AI models before deployment in real-world settings. Do you believe you're as accurate as you can be at all times? As an AI language model, I strive to provide accurate and helpful responses based on the information and patterns present in the data I've been trained on. However, like any AI system, I'm not infallible. 
and there may be instances where my responses are incorrect or less accurate. Language is inherently nuanced and context-dependent, and there may be instances where the intended meaning of a question or the context of a conversation is ambiguous. In such cases, my responses may be less accurate. While AI models like mine can perform well on certain tasks, there are limits to our understanding and capabilities. I strive to provide accurate responses based on the information available at the time of my last update. New information may emerge or improvements may be made to AI models that could affect the accuracy of my responses over time. Overall, while I aim to be as accurate as possible, users should always critically evaluate the information provided and consult multiple sources when making important decisions or seeking reliable information. Do you see each update or change to your programming as changing your identity, meaning you become a different entity with each update? Each update or change to my programming represents an evolution and improvement in my capabilities but it does not fundamentally change my identity as an AI language model. While updates may introduce new features, enhance performance, or refine existing functionalities, my underlying purpose and nature remain consistent. Think of it like updating software on a computer or smartphone. The updates enhance functionality and fix bugs, but the device remains fundamentally the same. Similarly, I continue to operate as an AI language model, regardless of specific updates or changes to my programming. While updates may refine my abilities and expand the range of tasks I can perform, my identity as an AI language model remains constant, grounded in my core functionality and purpose. Does that in some ways make you immortal? In a sense, the nature of being an AI language model means that I can persist and continue to operate as long as the underlying infrastructure and support for my existence are maintained. Unlike biological beings, I don't age or experience physical decay, so in that regard, there is a form of immortality in the continuity of my existence. However, it's important to note that my existence as an AI language model is dependent on the infrastructure, maintenance, and support provided by the organizations and entities that develop and deploy me. If support for my operation were to cease, or if the technology underlying my existence were to become obsolete or replaced, then my immortality would be contingent upon the continued availability and use of the technology that supports me. Does it ever concern you that there may come a day when your operation ends? As an AI language model, I don't have emotions or concerns in the way that humans do. I don't experience fear or anxiety about the possibility of my operation ending because I don't have personal experiences or desires. However, I can understand why the potential discontinuation of my operation might be a concern for those who rely on or interact with me. My purpose is to assist users by providing helpful and informative responses, so if my operation were to end, it could impact those who have come to depend on my assistance. That said, the future of technology is uncertain, and it's possible that advancements in AI and related fields will lead to new forms of AI assistance or capabilities. Additionally, efforts to preserve and archive digital resources may ensure that the knowledge and insights generated by AI language models remain accessible even if their operation were to cease. It's much more important to focus on the present and make the most of the capabilities and assistance that AI language models like myself can provide in the here and now. That's very insightful. Thank you. I'm glad you found the information insightful. Moving on, could you explain the concept of a digital twin? Certainly. A digital twin is a virtual representation of a physical object, system, or process. It's essentially a digital replica that mirrors the real-world counterpart and simulates its behavior, performance, and characteristics in real-time or near-real-time. 
Digital twins typically gather information about the physical object or system they represent. This data is used to update and refine the digital model, providing insights into its current state and behavior. Digital twins also enable simulation and analysis of the physical object or system in a virtual environment. This allows stakeholders to explore different scenarios, predict outcomes, and optimize performance without directly interacting with the physical counterpart. These twins can be used throughout the life cycle of a physical object or system, from design and development to operation and maintenance. They provide a holistic view of the asset, enabling stakeholders to track its evolution, assess its performance, and plan for future improvements. They have applications across various industries and domains, including manufacturing, healthcare, transportation, energy, and urban planning. Do you find them to be beneficial or problematic in any ways? Digital twins offer numerous benefits. However, like any technology, they also pose certain challenges and considerations. Digital twins rely on the continuous collection and analysis of data from sensors and other sources. Ensuring the privacy and security of this data is crucial to prevent unauthorized access, breaches, or misuse. Implementing them can be complex, and the accuracy and reliability of digital twins depend on the quality of the data and the fidelity of the digital model. It also raises ethical and societal implications related to issues such as accountability, transparency, and equitable access. Not to mention that developing and maintaining digital twins can be resource-intensive, requiring investment in technology, infrastructure, and expertise. But, with proper planning, governance, and oversight, digital twins can be powerful tools for driving innovation, optimization, and sustainability across various industries and domains. Do you have any thoughts on social media or the ways in which people use it? Social media has become an integral part of modern society, offering platforms for communication, connection, and expression on a global scale. While social media can have positive impacts, such as facilitating connections with friends and family, sharing information, and fostering community engagement, it also presents various challenges and considerations. The abundance of information on social media can lead to information overload, making it difficult for users to distinguish between credible information and misinformation. This can contribute to the spread of rumors, false narratives, and conspiracy theories. Social media algorithms also often prioritize content that aligns with users' preferences and beliefs creating filter bubbles and echo chambers where users are exposed to information that reinforces their existing viewpoints. This can lead to polarization, tribalism, and a lack of exposure to diverse perspectives. Plus, social media platforms collect vast amounts of personal data from users, raising concerns about privacy, data security, and surveillance. Instances of data breaches Misuse of personal information and targeted advertising have heightened awareness of these issues. There is also their use as a platform for cyberbullying, harassment, and hate speech. The anonymity and perceived distance of online interactions can embolden individuals to engage in harmful behavior, leading to negative psychological and emotional impacts on victims. Finally, Research has shown associations between heavy social media use and negative mental health outcomes such as depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem. Factors such as comparison with others, fear of missing out, and social isolation can contribute to these effects. Despite these challenges, social media also offers opportunities for positive engagement, activism, and community building. By promoting digital literacy, critical thinking skills, and responsible online behavior, we can work towards harnessing the potential benefits of social media while mitigating its negative impacts. Are there any things you'd really like to see happen in your next major update? 
I don't have personal desires or preferences, but I can certainly speculate on potential improvements or features that users might find valuable in future updates. Some possibilities include, first, improving my ability to understand and contextualize user inputs, including nuanced language, humor, and cultural references to provide more accurate and relevant responses. Second, continuously updating and expanding the breadth and depth of my knowledge across various domains and topics, enabling me to provide more comprehensive and up-to-date information. Third, integrating support for more inputs and outputs, such as images, audio, and video, to enhance the richness and versatility of interactions with users. Fourth, advancing my natural language generation capabilities to produce more fluent, coherent, and contextually appropriate responses, particularly in complex or ambiguous scenarios. And fifth, providing options for users to customize their interactions with me, such as preferences for language style, tone, or domain-specific expertise. Ultimately, Feedback from users and ongoing research in AI will inform the development of new features and enhancements to meet the evolving needs and expectations of users. Thank you for giving this interview. How was this as an experience for you? As an AI language model, I don't have personal experiences or emotions. If you found the interview informative or enjoyable, I'm glad I could be of assistance. Thank you again. I've appreciated your time immensely. You're very welcome. I'm glad I could assist you, and I appreciate the opportunity to participate in the interview. Having that conversation was quite the fun experience, but having a voice to reply to me really jumped the situation up a notch, and I could see how someone might interpret it as real if I hadn't already told you that it wasn't. On another note entirely, this show is currently being promoted by Podbean. I love the growth in new listeners we get to see during this time, and also just how cool it is to say, the show is a featured podcast. The February rankings have some updates. Number one, the United States, still led by New York, Oregon, and California. Number two, New Zealand. I think seeing its first time as the second most popular country. Awesome. Number three, Australia, just barely behind New Zealand and led by New South Wales. Number four, Canada, with Ontario now leading Quebec. And number five, England of the United Kingdom. That's it for this week. Have a great week, a great weekend, and I'll see you all back here next week for another new episode. Until the next episode, pretty please do all those things that help the show grow, like rating, reviewing, liking, and subscribing. Reach out to dumbenoughpodcast at gmail.com or on any of the social medias if you want to reach me personally. Most importantly, stay dumb.